Hi, so I'm going to be talking today about some recent work with John Paul de Gabrielli, Kenny Patterson, and Jakob Scholt on backdoors and pseudo random number generators. So the story really begins here with the Snowden leaks in 2013. So overnight, the threat model changed, and we needed to start considering governments as potential adversaries. Now, among the Snowden revelations was evidence that the NSA had colluded with software providers to insert backdoors into their cryptographic software. So when we talk about a backdoor, we mean a deliberate vulnerability in a scheme coupled with some secret backdoor information. And it's designed in such a way that if you don't know the backdoor, the scheme appears to be secure and doing its job. But if you do know the backdoor, then you get some advantage in subverting the scheme. Now, a good source of randomness is essential for many cryptographic applications. And correspondingly, a pseudo-random generator or a pseudo-random number generator with input is pretty ubiquitous in cryptographic implementations. And we'll define both more formally as we go through. But the key difference is that a PRG is deterministic, whereas a PRNG is able to gather entropy from its operating environment. Now, it's the ubiquity of these primitives and implementations, coupled with the fact that often if the source of randomness fails, then the security of the scheme which is relying on it crumbles as well, which makes these very attractive <laughs> targets for attackers. Sorry, okay, so um, it makes these very attractive targets for an attacker who might wish to optimize um, the impact and the spread of a backdoor. And this isn't just conjecture, we know this has really happened with the infamous Julie C, which achieved widespread deployment and has been shown to be exploitable in practice, and which more recently reared its ugly head again in the Juniper firewalls. Thank you. Okay, so in 2014, Valare, Patterson, and Rogaway, we ramped, we ramped the field of kleptography for the post Snowden world. And in the uh, process, kickstart a whole new line of theoretical research into this area. And it's very much into this strand of work that ours fits. Now, in particular, the first post Snowden treatment of backdoor PRGs was by Dodes et al. in 2015. And we take this work as our jumping off point here. So the question we seek to explore is, to what extent can a pseudo-random number generator be backdoored and simultaneously provably secure? So to this end, we strengthen existing results on backdoored PRGs, and we initiate the first study of backdoored PRNGs of input. So we come up with definitions and models, we present a construction of a robust backdoored PRNG, and we have an impossibility result, this theoretical lower bound which links the so-called backdoorability of a robust PRNG to its state size. So I'm going to try and touch on all of these today because whilst the work on PRNGs is probably our main contribution, I think the work on PRGs is quite a nice way of introducing some of the ideas that we're ultimately going to use in that later work. So what is a PRG? So a PRG takes a short, truly random string as input, and output pseudo-random bit strings of arbitrary polynomial length. And we modify the syntax slightly here to facilitate our backdooring definitions. So um, formally, a PRG is a tuple of algorithms where setup outputs a pair of parameters for the generator. And PP denotes the public parameter, which is an input to all other algorithms. And we're going to use BK to represent the secret backdoor key. Now in it outputs an initial state for the generator S0. And next, takes as input the current state of the generator and returns a public output, R, and um, an updated state, S prime. And you can see it's essential that the state is kept secret, because any attacker that knows a state has everything they need to be able to compute all future output. Now, when we talk about PRG security, well, at the very least, we want these outputs to be indistinguishable from random bit strings. But we're actually going to be interested in PRGs with a stronger property, which is that of forward security. So forward security says, suppose at some point in time, the state of your generator gets compromised. Now, clearly, all bets are off about future output. But what forward security asks is, can previous outputs remain secure and pseudo-random, even conditioned on knowledge of the state? So now to backdoor PRGs, which we define in line with the definitions given by Dodis et al. in their paper. So our backdoor PRG is a tuple of algorithms with setup in it and next, just as before, 
But now we add this new algorithm B, which is highlighted in red, where B stands for Big Brother, and this models our backdoor adversary. Now, Big Brother is internal in the sense that he's built into the specification of the PRG itself, but he's also kind of external in that other than getting the backdoor key, he can only observe public outputs and parameters. Now, there are various different ways that Big Brother might seek to benefit from a backdoor. So for each of these different backdooring goals, we write a game which captures that goal and an advantage term to measure how well Big Brother does. And we'll see an example of this in a couple of slides' time. So putting it all together, we say our tuple of algorithms is a backdoored forward secure PRG of a given type. If without knowledge of the backdoor, the algorithms form a forward secure PRG, but Big Brother, with his backdoor key, gets some advantage in subverting the scheme. So the authors in the paper from which we take our definitions present a number of different constructions of backdoor PRGs. However, none of these allow Big Brother to recover past output values while simultaneously being forward secure. And when you think about it, the two seem kind of at odds, right? Because forward security is all about protecting past outputs, and we want to subvert them. So this is an open problem. Can these two properties coexist? And it turns out the answer is yes, they can, and even worse. So we come up with a new backdooring model in which we initialize the generator with some state S0. Then we run the generator forwards to produce Q outputs. Then Big Brother is given one of those outputs, just one, and the secret backdoor key. And he, we challenge him to recover the very first state of the generator. And you can see this is a very strong form of compromise because with the first state, he can compute everything that happens subsequently. And you can actually show that this is strictly stronger than any of the models given in the paper by Dodis et al. Now we come up with a couple of constructions of PRGs which achieve this, but I'm gonna talk about one in particular today because we're ultimately gonna use a similar trick when we backdoor a PRNG. So the key components are we take a forward secure but non-backdoored PRG and we're gonna augment it using a special encryption scheme to give it a backdoor. So this encryption scheme has ciphertexts that look like random bit strings, and it's statistically re-randomizable, which means we have um, an efficient algorithm that takes as input a ciphertext and some random coins, and it returns a new ciphertext encrypting the same underlying message. And to be statistically re-randomizable means that an honestly generated ciphertext and the re-randomization of a ciphertext generated with arbitrary randomness are statistically close. Now in the full construction, we need a scheme to have a few extra properties that I'm not really gonna touch on here, but it can easily be seen to be achieved with Elgamar with carefully chosen encoding schemes. So for the construction, we begin by simply generating the parameters for the underlying PRG and the encryption scheme. And we make everything public except for the secret decryption key, which perhaps unsurprisingly, we're gonna keep back and give to Big Brother. So to craft the initial state of our backdoored PRG, we begin by generating a state S0 for the underlying PRG, which we then encrypt. And it's these two components together which form the state of the backdoored PRG. So when next is called, we need to do two things. We need to produce output and we need to update the state. So to produce output, we simply output the ciphertext in the state as it is. And then to update the state, we call the underlying PRG on S update the state accordingly, and use the output produced to re-randomize that ciphertext in the state. So to see how this helps Big Brother, now by construction, whichever output he's given is a ciphertext encrypting S0, the first state of the underlying PRG. I'm glossing over details here, but essentially this gives him everything he needs to be able to reconstruct the first state of the backdoor PRG, and in the process, all other states and outputs. Now, the, encryption, the correctness of the encryption scheme ensures that Big Brother succeeds in probability one, so this is a very effective backdoor. And due to the properties of the encryption scheme, all of these ciphertexts appear pseudo-random and independent of each other. So uh, the forward security follows from this, and the fact that the underlying PRG itself is forward secure. So at this point, we're kind of forced to conclude that unfortunately, deterministic PRGs are totally susceptible to backdooring. Um, it's hard to think of a much more devastating form of compromise than that that we've just seen. So it makes sense at this point to turn our attention to PRNGs of input. 
both because they're widely deployed in practice, but also because intuitively you feel that this flow of entropy into the system is gonna make Big Brother's job harder. And it turns out it does to an extent. So what's the PRNG? We define PRNGs in line with the model given by Dodis et al. in their 2013 paper. So essentially, a PRNG is a deterministic PRG with a refresh procedure added. So refresh is an algorithm that takes an input that generates a state and some entropy input I, and it combines these to produce an updated state S prime. Now these entropy inputs are gathered from a source of randomness which may be imperfect. In the real world, this, they will be drawn from things like disk timings and keystrokes. So to model this process, we use an algorithm D, which we call the distribution sampler. And in particular, the addition of this refresh algorithm means that we expect a good PRNG to be able to recover from state compromise provided sufficient entropy then enters the system. So to capture this, the strongest security notion um, for PRNGs is that of robustness. So here we imagine a scenario where we set the generator running and we flip a bit B, which determines whether the adversary will see real or random outputs. Now in contrast to the PRG setting where the adversary is passive and can just observe outputs, here we give him a number of oracles which reflect different ways in which he uh, might compromise the state of the generator or influence its entropy source. And what robustness says is that even in the face of all this compromise and all this interference, no bounded adversary can work out what that challenge bit is much better than guessing. So this is a very strong security property. Now, the authors in the paper from which we take our definitions present a construction of a provably robust PRNG with input. And conveniently for us, it has output which is produced by a deterministic forward secure PRG. So, all we need to do is swap this with the backdoored one that we've just spoken about, tweak the entropy accumulation a bit, and we immediately obtain a PRNG of input which is backdoored in the sense that now Big Brother can take one output and he can compute everything going back to the previous refresh call and everything up to the next refresh call. But there's a snag here, right? Because as soon as the generators refresh with sufficient entropy, the state is going to evolve to something which is statistically unpredictable, and Big Brother is going to need to capture another output in order to regain his backdoor advantage. So it becomes clear that if we're gonna backdoor a PRNG in any meaningful kind of way, we need to be able to move past these refresh calls. This motivates our backdooring models. So the scenario we imagine is a PRNG is initialized with some state S0. Now S0 is then evolved via a sequence of refresh and next calls, which we record in a refresh pattern. And ultimately we're going to use this pattern as a parameter of the experiment. Now at some point we stop and we give Big Brother some arbitrary output RI along with a secret backdoor key. And we see what he can do with this. Um, can he produce some arbitrary output RJ or some arbitrary state? Or can he do even better and go all the way back to the beginning computing everything as we were able to in the setting of deterministic PRGs? So we present a construction of a robust PRG of input which allows Big Brother to recover arbitrary past outputs even when they are separated by these refresh calls. So the key components are we take a robust but non-backdoored PRNG, and again, we're gonna augment it using our special encryption scheme. So to construct the initial state, we generate a state S for the underlying PRNG, which is shown in yellow here. And you can think of this as the active part of the state of the backdoored PRNG, because we're then gonna add to it a whole lot of redundant space, which is shown here in blue. And we're gonna use this space to store encrypted snapshots of the active part at crucial points during its evolution, namely after refresh calls. So at a given point in time, the state of our backdoor PRNG is gonna look like this, with um, a set of encrypted snapshots stored in the state. So when refresh is called, we simply apply the refresh algorithm of the underlying PRNG to the active part and update it accordingly. But now at the conclusion of a period of refreshing, we take an encrypted snapshot of the active part of the state 
and we store it in the state of the backdoor PRNG by shifting everything else down to make room for it. So you can see that as much as we have taken on new information here, we've also lost something. Um, the last ciphertext has been pushed out of the state and we're not gonna be able to get it back again. And you can also see that the number of encrypted snapshots we can store is limited by the size of the state. So now we have a state that has a lot of useful information encoded in it, and we need to get this out to Big Brother somehow. So to do this, we produce output in two distinct ways, and we alternate between them in a way that appears pseudo-random. So the first way is we simply leak these encrypted snapshots in the form of output. Whereas the second way, we compute output by applying the underlying PRNG to the active part of the state. And crucially, output produced in the second way is reproducible if you have the right encrypted snapshot. So for Big Brother to succeed here, a couple of things need to happen. Um, firstly, it needs to be the output he's given, consists of the encrypted snapshots, and that the output he's targeting is one that was produced in this latter way. And also, it needs to be that the output he's targeting is in range, in the sense that there haven't been so many refresh calls between the two outputs, that the snapshot he needs has been pushed out the stage and lost. So correspondingly, Big Brother succeeds with probability approximately a quarter to target values in range, and zero otherwise. And throughout, careful re-randomization of all these ciphertexts ensure that they appear pseudo-random and independent of each other. And security follows from this, and the robustness of the underlying PRNG. And there are many optimizations and variations possible on this basic scheme. So suppose, for example, you were targeting a specific output value that was going to be exposed as a nonce in a protocol. Then you could make sure that the encrypted snapshot you need is always stored in the state and achieve a much better success probability. Now, in reality, as you can see, the situation's not quite so simple. And that's because robustness it's such a strong security guarantee that to be able to give the state all this extra structure and still prove the generators are bust takes some quite delicate work. But it's possible, and so we're forced to conclude that unfortunately PRNGs are also susceptible to backdooring, and even the really strong property of robustness is no guarantee against this. But there is some glimmer of hope here, because you'll notice that our backdoored PRNG has a very large state and that Big Brother's ability to go back is fundamentally limited by the size of the state. So this raises the question of, is this somehow inherent? And it turns out that the answer is yes. So in our impossibility result, we proved that for a restricted but still important class of distribution samplers, that there's a limit, dependent on the state size, to how much information about previous states, even an, un an unbounded adversary can recover. So to give this equation some context, we're imagining a scenario where we run the generator, Big Brother's given some output R, and we challenge him to recover not just one previous state this time, but a vector of J states, each of which has been separated by a high entropy refresh. So that's the left-hand side of this equation, and because min entropy measures how difficult it is for an unbounded attacker to predict something, if Big Brother, who is bounded, is gonna stand a chance, the left-hand side is going to need to be very small. Now, making Big Brother's life more difficult, on the right-hand side, the epsilon term corresponds to the level of robustness security of the generator. So if the generator's robust, epsilon's gonna be very small, and the log of its reciprocal is going to be very large. And even worse, this large term scales linearly with J. So the more refreshes we ask Big Brother to try and bypass, the larger and larger this term gets. Now the only thing making the right-hand side smaller is this minus N term, where N is the state size of the generator. But of course, this is fixed in the beginning. So as we ask Big Brother to go back further and further, and J continues to grow, at some point, it's gonna hit a wall where the right-hand side is simply too large and Big Brother hasn't got a chance of being able to recover the information that he wants. So in conclusion, the bad news is that despite their strong security properties, both forward secure PRGs and robust PRNGs of input are both susceptible to backdooring. But the better news is that robust PRNGs do offer some inherent resistance. 
So in the full version of the paper, we have strengthened our impossibility results to get bounds on recovery of past output values and prediction of future output values. And avenues for further work would be to consider immunizers, so ways in which we can post-process the output of the PRND to try and diminish Big Brother's advantage. Um, it would be good to have tighter bounds for our impossibility results. And perhaps most importantly of all, we know robustness isn't enough, but can we find another property of PRNGs which excludes the presence of a backdoor? So that's the conclusion of my talk. Thank you for listening.